Installation of Wellfac 200 Energy Sliding Casement Door with 25mm Threshold Please ensure the appropriate health and safety precautions are taken into consideration prior to commencing any task. Handling on the building site The sliding casement door is heavy, so always use suitable lifting gear. On the yellow label placed on the jam, you'll find information about the element size and weight. Where possible, Belfac recommends that the sliding casement door should be mounted as a complete element. If removal of sashes cannot be avoided, then remove the fixed sash. If this is still not sufficient, the opening sash can be removed. Please note that you should not open the opening sash before the sliding casement door is properly supported, as this would damage the frame. In this video, we'll show how to fit the sliding casement door as a complete element. Afterwards, we'll show how the sashes can be removed. Preparation of the structural opening and support of the sliding casement door In order to be able to support the weight of the opening sash, the threshold should be supported externally for every 200 mm. That's why the threshold is fitted at the factory with supports underneath the jams, under the mullion and for at least every 200 mm. The location of the sliding casement door threshold should be completely level for the full length of the element. The support blocks can be fixed with a little silicone. Placing the sliding casement door in the structural opening, lift the sliding door with suitable lifting gear. Place the sliding casement door on the support blocks in the structural opening and fix it plumb, level and diagonal measurements. It's essential for the door's functionality that the frames are installed correctly. Check that the door is vertical. Make sure that the threshold is completely level. Then check the diagonal measurement. The sliding casement door is very sensitive to tolerance, so the difference should be no more than plus minus one millimeter. Internally, the threshold should be supported under the jams, under the mullion, and for at least every 400 millimeters. Check that the sashes are vertically flush. Measure the distance between the two sashes at the top and bottom. The distance should be eight millimeters and there should be no more than a maximum of one millimeter difference between the two measurements. If the measurements are not within tolerance, the installation of the door frame should be adjusted. It's much quicker to adjust the installation of the door frame than to adjust the door into place afterwards. Fixing the sliding casement door in the structural opening. Fixing of the head and jams should be carried out in accordance with the general requirements for fixing doors. Remember to place support blocks behind all locks and fixing points. Fixing of the threshold should be carried out on both sides of the vertical post and for at least every 750 mm. Fixing should be carried out plumb down into the supporting structure. The cover plate for the sliding truck and for the threshold are supplied separately. The cover plate for the sliding truck should be mounted as follows. Open the opening sash and place the cover plate on top of the sliding truck. Now attach it with two Allen screws, one on each side of the arm. The threshold cover plate should be mounted as follows. Place the cover plate in the notch on the threshold, turn it down and press it into place. Wait with mounting the threshold cover plate until the end of the building process so it doesn't become scratched. Finally, the sliding casement door should be insulated and sealed in accordance with the applicable regulations. Checking and adjustment options. 
Check that the sashes are aligned vertically. Measure the distance between the sashes at the top and bottom. The distance should be 8 mm. And there should be no more than a maximum of 1 mm difference between the two measurements. Otherwise, the sliding casement door should be adjusted in the height. The height of the sashes can be adjusted at the corner hinges at the bottom of the sashes. The bearing adjustment is located on the underside of the hinge. Turn clockwise to lower the sash. Counterclockwise to lift the sash upwards. Close the sliding casement door and check that the glazing beads are equally visible on both sides. Otherwise, the opening sash should be adjusted laterally. Use a long Torx and a mini ratchet spanner. Loosen the three screws. Move the sash the required number of millimeters and tighten the screws again. Close the sash and check that the espanolette handles close easily. Otherwise, the closing pressure should be adjusted. Loosen the three screws on the synchronization rod. The closing pressure should now be corrected automatically, so that the screws should just be tightened again. Dismounting the fixed sash. If removal of sashes cannot be avoided, then remove the fixed sash. Find the long Belfac Allen key located on the glazing on the sliding casement door's fixed part. If it's not here, it'll be on a fixed window in the same delivery. Start by removing the plug cover in the head and loosen the retaining bracket. Then loosen the fittings around the sash. Put the Allen key fully in and release the sash by turning the fittings 90 degrees. Tilt the sash outwards at the top. A safety bracket holds it at a 25 to 30 degrees angle. Release the safety brackets on both sides by tilting the sash slightly inwards and pushing the fittings upwards. Gently lift the sash slightly upwards and free of the guide rail. The sash must be stored in an upright position and must be packed off of finished floor to prevent any weight being applied to the plastic profiles that form part of the sash. When remounting, the fixed sash should be raised up over the guide rail and remounting should then be carried out in the reverse sequence to dismounting. Dismounting the opening sash Never open the opening sash before the sliding casement door is properly supported, as this will damage the frame. The opening sash can only be removed after the fixed sash has been removed. First remove the derailment protection in the front sliding truck. There are three grub screws in the guide rod at both ends of the sash. First, tighten the middle screw in so that it is level with the guide rod. This holds the sliding truck temporarily in place. Then loosen the top and the bottom screws. Disengage the guide rod at the bottom and move it slightly out to the side so that the guide rod can be released from the top side arm. The sash is now free at the top. Re-engage the guide rod immediately at the bottom and tighten the bottom screw to keep the sliding truck in position. Then loosen the middle screw again. Gently lift the sash slightly upwards and free of the guide rail. The sash must be stored in an upright position and must be packed off of finished floor to prevent any weight being applied to the plastic profiles that form part of the sash. During remounting, the opening sash should be installed before the fixed sash. Place the sliding trucks on the guide rail. The guide rod should be installed on the slider at the top first. Remounting should then be carried out in the reverse sequence to dismounting.